So after many requests, I can't avoid this one any longer. It's time to look at the libero. So then the libero, the most exotic of the defensive roles you can get. Now most people probably go for central defenders just like that. If they're getting a bit more exotic and they've got good technical players, they might switch them to a ball playing defender. Or this year, a little bit more exotic, the wide centre back. Very rarely do we see a successful tactic that incorporates a libero either on support or even attack as the middle one of those three. So we've got a lot to cover and this is what we're going to go through today. So we're going to look at the role in detail and have a little look at it. The formation we're going to use for the test, we are going to use Sport in Lisbon in Portugal. We're going to have a look at its in-match positioning using probably 2D, maybe a little bit of 3D as well. Play a data report, so let's see what he does in-match, his passes, his clearances, his headers, his dribbling, all that. And a different way to use a libero right at the end, a way that you might not have considered. So I guess first up, we'll have a look at what the game says about the libero. And this is going to give you a good idea of the type of player you're going to need to use in this role. The libero drops deep behind the defensive line, aim to sweep up, to pick up extra attackers, make blocks, tackles, clearances, but he's got to be athletic, great reading of the game. He's going to cover errors, but also, this is the key point, he takes possession of loose balls from a deep position and then works with it. So he's going to roam forward with it, with the ball, look for passes, support in the midfield. Now, if we have him on support, he'll step into midfield, kind of act like that deep line playmaker in possession, playing through balls. If we go for attack, and that's what we're going to do today, the Libero virtues much farther up the pitch to provide a goal scoring threat as well. So he's going to act like somewhat of an attacking midfielder on occasion. Now, like I said in the intro, we are going to use Sport in Lisbon for this, and this is the sort of formation we're going to use. Now, I'm not expecting great, great results. I'm purely using this formation because I want to unleash the Libero on attack. So either side of him, I've got standard central defenders because I think we're going to need those two to stay in their roles because he's going to venture quite a lot. So if we had ball playing defenders next to him, they also like to venture, we're going to be too exposed, which is also why I've got wing back on support on one side, and wing back on defend on the other because I don't want them on attack because I don't want them spending too much time high up especially on the left hand side where I've got Santos there as the winger the support is going to do most of the work down there I've got a central midfielder on attack moving into channels and I've also got a shadow striker moving into channels to back up Esajeo or Poro depending on who I play there now you'll see that big gaping gap there in the middle of the centre backs they on attack what type of player are we going to put there that's the key thing now if we look at the explanation of the player especially on attack, he's going to need to drop behind the defensive line, sweeping up through balls, picking up extra attackers. He's going to need a lot of key attributes here. Goal saving tackles, blocks and interceptions. He's going to need good anticipation, good positioning, good decisions, acceleration, pace, marking, tackling, technique as well, dribbling. Any more? The answer is, yeah, probably. Probably more than that as well. So you're going to really need a complete footballer, which is why you probably won't see liberos in lower league football. Now that doesn't just mean that elite centre-backs can do the job. Look, I'm a Man City fan. Ruben Diaz is the best centre-back we've had since company by a long way. However, he wouldn't be my first choice for a libero. I've got libero attributes highlighted there. Across the board, pretty damn decent, you've got to say. But some of them, some of them are slightly lacking. Acceleration and pace could be better. And the key ones, probably, if you're going to use one on attack or even support, long shots are down at four. And that's probably the one there you're looking at flair of eight passing could be a little bit better and vision so someone like diaz an absolute ironclad world-class central defender not necessarily ideal for a libero so who are we going to use now look we're not going to have a world world-class libero at sport in lisbon but a good all-round player is going to be an option now i want a player who's capable of playing in central defense but he's got a little bit more about him going forward so i think i found the ideal player in jerry saint just now saint just is a wing back who can also play center back and can also play midfield as well meaning that his attributes cover a wide range you can see he's got good acceleration good pace marking's decent tackling's decent positioning everything's in order and he's also got passing and vision and a little bit of flair as well now if we were to slot him into the libero role you can see the only thing that's really really stand out lacking is his long shots other than that a good all-rounder that's the type of player we want athletic good technicals, good mentals, and I think the capability of playing midfield and other positions will help him out in this libero role. 
So we're going to take a look at him in match now, in this game, away from home. Let's see how he shapes up. So there he is in the centre. We've got the ball down here now. Just because he's on attack doesn't mean he's going to aimlessly bump forward. He's going to pick and choose his moments. As we play it on, Ignacio there. Look at him hold back. Pedro finds him. Now, look at that expansive pass through to Polina. So he's playing like a bit like a deep-line playmaker there. He hovers in the middle there, slightly ahead of centre-backs one and two. See how advanced he is there. That's why I feel like we need these two centre-backs to hold their position more. Let's keep an eye on him as the move progresses. Still hovering there. Now, see that initial movement back? He saw we'd lost the position and then he darted across towards the striker there. Putting pressure on him straight away. Right, check these stats out for why he's so important in defence as well from this same game. 88 minutes gone. We're on the player stat screen. And let's have a look at Jerry St. Just. Now let's have a look at Jerry St. Just's stats. Now you can see here the tackling and aerial department is where I want to focus on. Just next to him, Coates and Nacio, his two centre-back partners. Three interceptions each and three and four clearances. Now St. Just in the middle doing the anticipation, the reading of the game. Seven interceptions. 12 clearances and check out this next one 24 aerial challenges 83 percent of one he is integral in that team so here's his average position throughout that last match now in defense you can see he's nicely in line with his two center backs partners in line so good defensive attributes positioning and the like come in handy there now when he's with the ball you can see how much he steps ahead of them so that's why i wanted Coates and anasio to just be central defenders to maintain their position while he gets a little bit more expansive let's take a little look at his passing now this is going to blow your mind about how far across the pitch he gets so i've set it down here to the first half zero to 45 minutes and up here pass is completed 41 in that first half so let me press it there and i'll look where his second then passes from he is literally all over the place look passing all over the place from zero to 45 minutes covering all that central area you can see him bombing forward and getting back into position now if we change this down here to the second half like that there you go again all over the place but because we have that 3-0 lead he probably sat back a little bit more but still getting forward but there's a nice little guide on where you're going to find him picking the ball up and playing those passes and that little start there is interceptions so seven interceptions and you can see there that they're not just down the central there because he's anticipation and decisions he covers out wide so on that occasion he's probably covering for the left wing back over here he's coming for the right wing back so all round covering interceptions all over the place the team by the way at the minute has won four out of four going well so what i'm going to do now is going to play a clutch of games with this system and we're going to come back and see how he's performed in it so first off the team the team still sit high up in the league they haven't lost and more importantly they've only conceded one goal despite using the libero on attack so here's St. Just, you can see his average rating has been 7.34 in the league, 7.43 overall. Now, his form tab shows his passing is exceptional down there. Close to 100% on most occasions, 90%, 95%, and that comes down to his attributes. Remember what, he can play at a variety of positions, including midfield, and that really helps the passing side of it. Now, the defensive side of it, we talked about his head in there. 27 headers there in that particular match, winning 22. Loads of interceptions throughout every match. Super integral part of the team. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I think if you had Quartes or Nastro in that role, his passing wouldn't be quite as good because remember, Quartes, for example, his passing and vision weren't quite as good as St. Just, which is why we picked him along with the flair. And when your libero's on attack, he's going to need a bit of flair because he's going to look for them expansive passes like we saw with all those passes that he did in that prior clip. So we've seen what the libero is capable of. He goes all over the pitch. He covers, he passes, he dribbles. There's something eating away at me a bit, and I want to try it. And we're going to try it now. So I used St. Just, who is the defender who can play in midfield as a libero. I want to try something a bit different. So what you're looking at there is Mikel Oyazabal. Now, I think that said that right. Now, if you look at that, he has came up trumps in a search of mine. Now, in my search, I've picked attributes that I think are most desirable for my favoured libero attack role, including jumping reach. When I pressed it, all these boys came up. Now, there is some people who play at centre-back who would be perfect for the role, such as the Crow at Wolfsburg and Ben White at Arsenal. But we wanted to try something a little bit different, and it came down to a toss-up between Fabian at Napoli and Ayazabal at Sociedad. Now, I went for Ayazabal because... He's primarily known as a really attacking player, if not a striker. So if we can get it to work with this guy, we're onto something. 
There's the Azabal slotted in as a libera on attack. He's going to play at least six months, going to see how he does. I'm also going to put him to retrain in that position. So by the time we come back to it, he should have a nice little dot there. Maybe it might be a disaster, but I'm so curious to see how it's going to work. Pause the test quite early. He was sitting third in the league. And what's more impressive is we've only conceded nine goals. Now remember, we have got a Yazabal playing as the main centre back. And look at that link up already. So that's a good sign. As we click on a Yazabal, already, we're only in November. He's getting there, isn't he? He's getting there. He's getting comfortable in that role, playing decent. Look at his form down here. In the Euro Cup, he's got a 7 points in 5. And in La Liga, 13 games, 4 goals, 6.94. There's not a lot wrong with that. If we go to his inform stuff, the assistant manager has been hauling him off quite often, which is understandable. But still, passes superb percentage. And if we go over to headers, we've gone up for loads of headers, winning a large percentage of them. And it looks like, especially here against Sturm Graz, it's getting better all the time. So we're back from the test. Uh, we just got that random result against Barcelona. What? And you can see down in the bottom corner, he has about 7.5 playing in that centre-back role. Now here is the man. Now you can see a lot of his attributes have gone the way down because remember, I am training him to be a libero on attack. But, but, he is now a complete natural in that position. Having played 30 matches now, six goals, three assists from that position. His pass percentage is just ridiculous. Look at that. It's perfect. He's getting key passes as well, which is what you'll see from a more attack-minded all-round player. Getting some tackles in. Interceptions aren't as many as, obviously, Jerry St. Just, a natural defender. But for a little experiment, I think it's pretty cool. The team, by the way, playing a striker at centre-back, let's not forget, have got the joint second-best defensive record in the league and they scored two per game. And that natural flow between the centre-backs is all still there. He bombs forward and these boys clean up for him. That was obviously an extreme example. An ideal candidate would have been Fabian at Napoli. But I wanted to show you what he could possibly do. That's a striker. A striker who have just chucked in a centre-back as a libero. And now he's a blooming natural. 